People who watch my videos regularly will know that I'm no fan of financial markets jargon. But in this video, I've got to give you a word that's absolutely essential if you are a fixed income or bond investor. And that word, to minimize the suspense, is duration. Now, I don't turn off the video. I want to explain why it's so important and give you a very simple tour of how it works and what it tells you. So, with no more ado, key question for most people who are investing at the moment, certainly anyone who's invested in fixed income securities or bonds, when will interest rates rise? Who knows? The, the central bank seems to change its opinion. And how will this affect bond prices? And what can I do to potentially minimise the impact or reduce the impact on my uh, bond portfolio? Well, the key word that attempts to give you the impact that an interest rate rise could have on a particular bond that you're holding is duration. And that's the word that I want to cover just now. Now, what are the main risks? Now, there are others. What are the main risks when you hold a bond? Duration deals with one of them. Okay, if you hold a bond, interest rate changes, particularly if interest rates rise and you're holding a fixed income bond, <clears throat> I cover why in another video in more detail, can be a problem. And that's because if you're holding a bond with a fixed coupon, all right, as interest rates rise, if you want to see it this way, the value of your coupon relative to returns you could get elsewhere falls. That tends, okay, at the end of the day, to push down bond prices so your overall yield is maintained. So an interest rate rise tends to be bad news for bond prices. The question is, how bad? And that's where duration comes in. But the point I want to make on this slide is that duration only looks at sort of one side of the bond risk equation. There is another one, which is issue a default. That's the risk that you simply don't get your money back. That is left to another form of risk assessment. There are ratings agencies out there, for example, Moody's, Standard & Poor's, who do risk ratings, cover them in more detail elsewhere. And that tells you a bit more about the risk of issue a default. But just be aware that duration, whatever it is, is dealing with just <coughs> this side of the equation. Now, duration math is pretty horrible. And to be honest, I wouldn't expect most people to ever want to get their heads around it. But the question is, if you're quoted the number, what does it mean? That's what we're getting to in this video. What, what does it mean? What does it tell you? And how should you sort of judge it? So why are bond yields currently so low? All right, just a word before we get into the, the sort of duration stuff itself. Interest rates, the bank rate, are historically low levels. All right, so everyone's sitting there at the moment, Bond prices have been pushed up, whether you're talking about government bonds, whether you're talking about corporate bonds. All right, interest rates are historically low levels. So that's the inverse relationship I talked about between uh, interest rates and bond prices. As bond prices move up, yields get squashed. QE has increased the impact. That's central banks buying government IOUs, uh, the impact of pushing up prices, driving down yields. All right, safe haven demand. Post-credit crisis, people have sort of rushed into government IOUs as a source of, uh, sort of safety, if you like. And prices have therefore risen, yields have fallen. There's been lots of factors working on bonds, sort of increase prices, particularly in the kind of core government bond markets, and reduce yields. Now, you can see that here. Here's the UK bank rate. Quite a spectacular chart, 1964 to 2014. So that's 50 years' worth. And there is the bank rate, also known as the base rate, or was known as the base rate, all right, tumbling almost, not in a straight line, but you can see tumbling down to a historic low, hasn't been this low for ages and ages, of just 0.5%. So, impact has tended to be on prices, that's push prices up, on yields tend to push them down. And basically what you've had is sort of two things working on what's called the yield curve. One of them is that low bank rate. So here are the 10-year yields for both UK government IOUs and US treasuries, more or less the equivalent. All right, so watch how the lines go down there and down there. All right, and what's been, what's been causing that, well, as mentioned, you know, so squashing those yields. All right, they've, they've risen a little bit just recently. Several forces acting to do that. As I say, one, central banks buying their own government's bonds, pushes prices up, drives down yields. Two, safe haven demand post the credit crisis. All right, so around, around about here, you can see demand sort of stepped up, all right, and that had the effect of uh, compressing the benchmark, as it's called, 10-year yield, both in the US and the UK and elsewhere, okay? And of course, you've had people thinking, well, where can I get a yield? I need income, and uh, bonds of one sort or another 
maybe not government bonds anymore, are a, rel a relatively safe and secure source of income in a world where people are struggling to generate it. So what's duration all about? Where does duration come in? Well, duration, to give it a technical term, which is pretty horrendous, is the weighted average maturity for all the future bond, bond cash flows. You might be thinking, well, thanks. I didn't need to watch a video for five minutes to learn that, Tim. But in practical terms, what is it? I'm going to simplify slightly. The rocket scientists might be slightly horrified by this simplification. But for you know, normal people, what is duration? Well, it estimates, in a nutshell, the impact that a 1% change in interest rates could have, it's not an exactly <coughs> linear relationship, could have on a bond's price. So in a nutshell, it says, you know, if interest rates were to move by 1%, what could happen to the price of the bond that you're holding? And obviously that's quite key for anyone holding a portfolio of IOUs or bonds. It's a number, all right? And the higher the number, so give an example there of five, the higher the number, the higher the interest rate sensitivity of the bond you're looking at. And that is about as much as most people want to know about duration. So broadly speaking, and I have to say broadly speaking because I'm glossing over a bit of the maths here, but broadly speaking, if a bond's got a duration, how would you know? Well, your, your broker can tell you this information is available. It's not, not a secret. If a bond's got a duration of five, then what you are saying is were interest rates to rise by, say, 1%, you'd expect around a 5% change in the bond's price. And you could expect a, um, a sort of similar proportionate change in the bond's yield as well. So, what changes it? All right, what moves duration? What would move you from five to six to seven? Um, well, the bond's coupons, the important factor. So when you're looking at a bond and thinking, you know, what's going to have an influence on this key number? Low coupon bonds tend to have higher durations. What does that mean? It makes them more interest rate sensitive. And that's just to do with the maths of it, really. Uh, the impact of, say, you know, a half percent change on something you're looking at that only generates 2% in total is greater than a half percent change on something that's generating you 10%. All right? So low coupon bonds tend to be more sensitive to change interest rate than ones that carry a higher coupon rate. That's one factor. And on the other side, maturity. How long has the bond got to go until it's bought back by the issuer? And as a rule of thumb, long maturity bonds tend to have higher durations. Why are they more sensitive to change in interest rates? Well, it's because there are, you're basically there are more cash flows to come from the bond, and the longer you have to wait to receive your cash, the riskier the instrument is. That's a rule of thumb for financial markets. The longer you have to wait for something, in this case, your coupons to come in, your money to come back from the issuer, the more risk you are taking. So there's a kind of rough rule of thumb, all right? If you've got a low coupon bond and a long maturity bond, you know, so it's got a coupon of, say, 1%, and it's got 30 years to go till maturity, that is going to be relatively interest rate sensitive compared to, let's say, to make up numbers, something with a much higher coupon rate, say 5%, and a much shorter maturity. So it's just your, your rule of thumb. Now, what does that mean? If you're nervous, if you're defensive, if you think interest rates will rise, now we don't know whether they will and we don't know when they will. There are some people speculating we could be in a low interest rate environment for ages and that banks will keep piling on the kind of quantitative easing pressure and so on that could keep interest rates down, keep bond yields down. But if you are a defensive investor, someone who's nervous, then you would want to look at duration and take practical steps with some help and advice potentially to reduce it. The reverse is also true. All right. And it's in that sense that this funny word duration is fairly critical to people that are invested in particular in fixed income securities, also known as bonds. <clears throat> that was a fairly fast talk, and I've assumed some knowledge here. So for those people who'd like a bit of background, other videos, my basic fixed income securities videos, part one and part two, cover the basic principles of IOUs, and also a bit more on the rewards and risks. And if you've got any questions on what I just said, because I covered quite a lot of ground there, editor at killick.com for any questions or comments.